morning. Woo! Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look, we are going to stream live today to multiple locations, but I'm your girl, Marky Lemon Drowl on the south side of the city of Chicago. And then we go all the way out west. Well, actually, we go all the way out west to California this morning to Dr. Mina Blazy. And then we have her twin sister. I'm going to let you guys ask which one is the oldest between the two. Carrie Little. What's going on this morning? So good morning, Marky. So I am Carrie Little from Illinois, and this is my identical twin sister, Dr. Mina Blazy, and I will let her introduce herself, and she can tell us who the oldest is. Come on. Okay, all right. So I'm Dr. Mina Blazy. I'm in Southern California, in beautiful summer, uh, Southern California. You know, it's a little warm, but she's the oldest, and she the reason why she said me introduce her because she tells me what to do, and I usually do it. So she is two minutes and 22 seconds older than me. But because I'm two hours different, I'm going to go with two hours, two minutes and 22 seconds. <laughs> so yeah, she is the oldest one. So it, during the pandemic, you both decided to pivot your businesses. Well, one, you became a PhD, right, during the pandemic, or was that before the pandemic? I actually finished in June during the pandemic. So I never really got to walk across the stage and I got on my road, but I, they didn't allow us to officially walk across the stage and uh, graduate. So, and what did you get your PhD in? I got my doctorate in um, educational leadership. So specifically in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics with the perspectives of girls in STEM. Ah, with the emphasis on girls in what now? STEM. So STEM is the um, acronym for science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and how we can get more girls into engineering and science. So really looking at how, how they think about STEM. Ah, so like me and Carrie, we, we girls, right? And we're in STEM. So kind of like the, the younger focus of me and Carrie. Right. So, you know, anybody that's in technology and looks at social media and how to get them to understand the behind the scenes stuff. Okay. And then the both of you became authors, right? Ah, I'm starting During to the pandemic because, the pandemic. because Marky Lemons made us go watch videos. And so, yeah. Don't blame it on Marky Lemons. And <laughs> don't blame it on Marky Lemons. Look, here's the thing. There's no need in me being an author all by myself, right? And there's some people who would have you to believe that I'm not sharing and giving. I share in the wealth and giving the wealth. However, I work hard and I like people who will implement. I don't like to talk just to talk. I know people think that that's what I like to do. I like <clears throat> to talk to people who are going to implement, take action, and see the true value. And so what I'm elated about is that you both took actions in the midst of a pandemic at the same time that Dr. Mina Blazy was earning her, I keep saying PhD, her doctorate degree, right? And as a result, we're all doing better. Now, what I want us to share today is the benefit of your journals. And so you both have journals that are in your industry. Carrie, you have one in the world of real estate, the new real estate agents journal. And we had a lot of new real estate agents come to the real estate market in 2020. And then uh, Dr. Mina Blazy, you have the principles journal, the journey, right? The journal for seasoned and new principles. Today, we're going to talk about the journey. We're going to talk about reflect, write, and learn, which is something that all of us believe in. So I want you both to hold up. Uh, and I don't know if Dr. Mina brought hers with hers today, but I know Carrie has hers in her hand. I want you to both hold them up. Look, this is just this is a twins moment, right? One went to the left, one went to the right, right? Um, if <laughs> Yeah, we did not rehearse this. So what I want each of you to do is tell me what is the favorite part of your journal? starting with Carrie. Okay, so <clears throat> my favorite part of my journal on page uh, three is there is no inbox in real estate. So right now, depending on which association you're a member of, you could be seeing 200, 300 new real estate agents come into the marketplace every single month. Why? Because the market's hot, right? Operation, I've got houses for sale. And when you 
come into the marketplace uh, and and usually when I'm in in person and I say how many of you had a real job and they tell me well I had a real job and then I'll I'll say in your real job did someone tell you what to do and in many cases unless you were the CEO the VP or the manager so even when you started whatever career it was in because my first job was at TJ Maxx someone told me what to do and then eventually yeah, I got a job based on my uh, twin sister skills. Eventually, someone gave me what I had to do every day. They gave me my stack of papers, and it was my inbox. In real estate, there is no inbox. And so what I have developed is my goal is to educate real estate agents on how to build their own inbox, how to create and build leads, how to find the business, how to... Um, get more listings, how to find the best houses to sell, how to use predictive analytics, and how to generate a pipeline. So when you do eventually get to that fifth year of real estate, you will now, your inbox is constantly working for you. So that's actually my favorite section, is to show agents how to figure out, per Mina, how to figure it out. So we're going to figure out how to figure it out, right? Look, this is the no excuse zone. Right. We're going to take action. And Dr. Mina Blazy, what is your favorite section of your journal? So good question. So I decided to write my journal, one, because my sister told me to. And two, I learned how to create the book. So you told her, I, she told me. And I wrote my book because I was a principal for over seven years. And I realized that people were coming to me asking me, how did I do what I did? And I built relationships with the community. And what I learned, my favorite part of my book on page 190 is be authentic. I think people go into whatever job they want to. In this book, anybody could use it. You don't have to be a principal. You just want to go into leadership. It works for everyone. Be authentic because if you aren't your authentic self, People, you will have to pretend to be somebody else all the time, whether you interview or not. If you, if somebody wants you, they will want you for who you are. So really looking at how you are as a person, how you interact with the community, and people will trust you if they know exactly who you are. So that's a really big deal to me. And and I, I mean, loving that people want to come to me, but I was overwhelmed. I went, you know what? I need to be able to talk to people through the book because I can't keep explaining this over and over and over again. So that's really why I wrote this book. But that end, the last section of the journal gives you lots of space to write and questions that you can answer. But being authentic, being who your authentic self was a really big deal to me because I'm from Illinois. I know I'm in Southern California. I know I have a Chicago draw, but that's who I am. And I don't want to change that for anyone. I don't want to have to go in and out of some other personality and once you are who you are, your community will absolutely love you. So let's have a talk about that. How, as twins, do you, I guess, pick your own? Because oftentimes we see twins, they look alike, they dress alike. Um, how, well, one, you both have two totally different personalities. You don't live in the same city, like a lot of things. But growing up, how did you find your own identity when it is two of you? So I am going to answer that. And the truth is, is that we have an identity of being identical twins. We have people that ask us the question, so what is it like to be a twin? Well, typically what we say is, what is it like not to be? Because we can't answer that question. So we are uh, um, two different people, but we tend to have similar likes. And then we, I went into a whole different arena. Like I teach biology and chemistry. I talk to people about biology and chemistry and I can totally nerd it up. I am just different. So growing up, we were allowed to be who we wanted to be. Our mother didn't try to make us the same person. That didn't mean we didn't want the same outfit. It might have been a different color, but we still may have wanted it. We also learned that we tend to buy some of the same things. Like one time she bought a jacket. I bought the skirt. It was in two different areas and it was the same company. Like she had the whole out. We had the whole outfit together. So just being who we are allows us to embrace and help each other. Like she's really good at social media. I'm learning from her how to do that. I'm learning how to interact with the community online. 
where with me, I take that same information and then employ it in schools, like how to brand my school when I was a principal, how to brand my district now that I'm in a, a, at the district level. So that's kind of where I am with that perspective. But, but as an identical twin, we kind of feed off of each other. And I'm just going to tell a quick story that literally when we were in high school, I was in cheerleading. She was in cheerleading. I fell off a girl's shoulder and she relocated. I dislocated my elbow and she relocated it. So I recommend having a twin if you can. But, you know, literally the doctors were like, is your sister an orthopedic surgeon? Nope. She's my identical twin. They came in asking her all the questions. I'm like, I'm in pain. Can you help me? So wait, wait, let me get Marky, let me just give you the, the my side of the story. In cheerleading, I know exactly which room we were were in at Proviso East High School. It, and we were practicing and Mina was going, it was the shoulder, going on the shoulders, and she fell and the arm dislocated, like just totally in another it was just backwards. I went and I grabbed both sides and I snapped it back. And I didn't even think I didn't re I just I just fixed it because all I saw was she was in pain. That's all I saw, Marky. And I got yelled at by the trainer at the high school and I was looking at her like she ain't in pain no more. Like that's all I thought about. Because it looked absolutely horrendous. I am dead. Now I'm gonna tell you why. Because <laughs> Mina I understand why Carrie thinks she can fix everything. Because you know she likes to fix stuff, right? And so it really, it started with you, right? So because she because she thinks she an MD, for real, for real, right? <laughs> then she going to fix all our problems because she didn't pop your arm back. Okay, I am. You know, you crazy. got stories, Marky. We uh, got stories. Now, okay. So let, let me think about this for a second because you have blown my mind. All right. I want to focus on being your true, authentic Self, And I'm going to bring in some of Danielle Leslie into this conversation because we've had the opportunity to have these conversations and it talks about being the culture fit or the culture ad. And I know that I've interviewed with several companies that I am not the culture fit and they did every company I've ever interviewed with has hired me they might not have hired me as an employee because they wanted the culture ad but they didn't really want me hanging around right and but I'm going to be marky all the time and I'm really mesmerized by how many people do not have the opportunity to be who they are like when you see me and I pull out pictures from three years old from five from 10 from 13 people every time they realize like really she is who she has always been right but I know that my mother encouraged and supported that like really encouraged it like beat me over the head like be who you are on it and she would use some choice words but basically to hell with everybody else either they gonna get with your program and how Marky like to do it <laughs> and that could be problematic too so when we dig into being that up authentic self because you say it's very important to you. What does one need to do because you've worked with a lot of students today? What actions can they take that will allow them to in the future walk in their true authentic way? What 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 are some of the things we're saying and doing for ourselves? So which actually goes to the beginning of my book, um, knowing your why. Why you do what you do because typically if you ask somebody why they do what they do, they will answer you in the how and the what. They will tell you what they do and they tell you how they do it. But if they can't tell you why they do it, nobody will follow you. If you want someone to know you are authentic, you can tell them why you do what you do in one statement or two, one sentence or two sentences. And it should come out and you sound and they, they believe you so much that because you believe what it is. So literally, yes, you should know how and what you do. But when somebody asks me who I am, I tell them why I do what I do. And then I can tell them what I do and how I do it. But that's why people in business do well when they can tell you why. I mean, there are companies that close now because they can't tell you why they did it. Montgomery Ward, Sears is closing. They forgot why they did what they did. It's it's about the people that you relate to, how you work with them. And I do what I do because I want to help educators be extraordinary so that they can allow their children, to, their students to be extraordinary. Same with the entire community. 
I can do that so well that they relate to what I'm doing and they believe what I'm talking about. And that goes within any industry. Don't just tell people why, what and how you do it because the, the target should be why do you do what you do and truly embrace that. So that's a great question. I love that question. Well, actually, I love your answer. So guys, I want you to go over to Amazon and purchase the principal's journal, The Journey. And Carrie, because we have so many people who come into the world of real estate, I was talking to the owner of DOS and a lot of times they come in and they want to do what someone else did, but 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 put a spin, like one little unique thing, right? However, people aren't doing anything that is uniquely them, right? And those companies that have done that have seen great success. So when you start thinking about the journal and how it in, in your journal is not the principal's journal, which we do want people to purchase the principal's journal. Your journal is the new real estate agent's journal. When we think about the new real estate agent's journal, how is that helping real estate agents look seasoned professionals and newcomers to the business? Even though it says new, right? We know that there's some people who've never been trained ever and have not had consistent success in real estate. What, sh what would they apply from your journal? So I'm going to go to the authentic section, just like uh, Dr. Amina Blasey did. So here we go. Yeah. So, and I'm going to read from my journal. Being authentic will allow you to build connections with your community. Don't fake it till you make it. And I could almost stop there. I remember my fourth grade teacher. I loved Mrs. White and she would always, and she was almost like Maya Angelou. And she would just say, yes, she was. Let me tell you. She would always say, if you've got it, flaunt it, but be yourself. So, so let me say this. I, when I got into the business of real estate in 2001, I got into the business because I really felt like I could sell real estate better than better than I can't say better than my real estate agent, but I felt like I could tell the story better. So a lot of times as real estate agents, we get in because listen, some of you fake it till you make it. I am watching you on Instagram and I am not telling all Marky and saying that she is looking you guys up and we're looking up data and you end up in our classes and then we we hide your information. We know when you are successful, we know when there was a pivot tell the truth. And so when, so even in the new real estate agents journal, everyone is always starting over in real estate, or you're trying to figure out how to build a business or how to reinvent yourself. So as a real estate agent, figure out how you can tell the authentic story about why you got in. If you got in because it looked awesome and then you figured out that it's not as easy as you thought, go start a journal go start a YouTube channel and tell the story about what you thought. Tell us why you got into the business. Share the story over and over again. And if you're a real estate agent that has never owned a house, tell us that story when you go through the process of buying. Because when we go and we look on social media and we see all of you, and, and I'm not saying I'm watching to the extent of trying to see if you're successful or not, because we do want you to look awesome. We do want you to look great. But if you are not selling real estate because you're trying to be like someone else, you are not your authentic you. So take a moment, get the new real estate agents journal today. And you might have to, you might have to, you know, watch some of these replays and you might have to go through the process of why really did I get into the business of real estate? It just so happens that my grandmother used to work for one of the Lindop brothers in Broadview, Illinois. So I can tell that story. I can talk about how one of the Lindop brothers uh, built properties on the south side of 38 and how one of the other Lindop brothers built on the, on the north side of uh, 38, Roosevelt Road. So I can always tell a story. If you can't tell me a story, you're not relatable. So how can you be your authentic you? Wow. You know what? To me, the more time you spend with your authentic you, I wonder, this is going to be a complex question. Some people have not learned to like themselves, like who they really are, right? And they're, they're looking for validation in all the wrong places. Once you validate yourself, 
you don't care what other people say. And I give you uh, an example. <clears throat> I remember years ago, I came out to Oak Brook on a Wednesday morning. I think it was like 6.30 a.m. for a Toastmasters group that met there. And at the time, I was already speaking in the world of real estate. And in Toastmasters, a lot of the approach is they tell you what you've done well, and then they tell you what you did not do well. So I took my time going to visit this club because I heard that they could be brutal, and they were. And basically, they told me I was horrible. What's funny is I already was being paid and had great reviews, right? So I don't understand where their information came from. There were two things that I took out of everything that they said. And I went and applied it to my business because to me, the rest was just an absolute pure D lie, right? And I want to tell you how hindsight works. The same people who were there judging me, I have beat them out for numerous jobs as a speaker. And every time I show up and I know that we went out for the same job and I'm on the stage and they're nowhere to be seen, I just chuckle in the back of my mind because I could have allowed their negative comments to dictate my future. I took out of that long list of negative things. I said, mm, need to work on that, mm, need to work on that. And the rest is garbage as far as I'm concerned. And I just kept it moving. And then a few years later, the truth actually probably, that had to be about 2006, 2007-ish. Let's go with it. And then I would say by 2015, I had full, full validation that what they said mm, was no truth to that nonsense because clearly <laughs> they was doing something wrong too. So when you know yourself and you're consistently working on yourself, you have to also, um, you don't take everybody's advice. Don't take say, put it on the advice. shelf. Yeah. Take the advice like Marky did. And sometimes you just may not have been ready to hear it. You don't have to get offended. Just say thank you. I'll I'll look at I'll I'll think about what you said. And I there was a pastor, Pastor uh, Randy Morrison, and he said if someone tells you something, sometimes you need to learn how how to have an ear to hear. Shall we go to church today? Right. Put it on the shelf, and you might need to ponder it later because it really might have been for you, and it might not have been. Yeah. I. You know what? At this point. I understand some of the things they said 100% were valid. But when I tell you they ripped me one, I mean they ripped me one. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, and I never went back again, right? And it wasn't until a couple of years later. And when I went to this session, a, a certain engagement, I intentionally went and sat in the back of the room to see this speaker. And I'm like, <laughs> He ain't got nothing on me. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> That's how we're going to do that today. But he probably didn't say so. He probably didn't say, um, but he probably wasn't entertaining. He's He was he was very rehearsed. And a lot of speakers, they are 100% very rehearsed. I, I'm pretty good off the cuff. I know what my speaking points are. And as you well know this, Carrie and Mina know this, because I practice what I preach, I visualize those same steps in my mind every single day because I'm teaching you what I actually do. A lot of people talk about things they don't actually do. So if I just sit here and close my eyes, I can direct you just like this, right? On anything, because we're doing it. It's not made up. So it's a lot less rehearsed. Uh, it's, it's physically rehearsed, but not a, a script rehearsed. And so now, you know, that goes back to, Marky, um, Pardon me when when like I have been thrown on a panel last minute and Marky, you should actually tell that story about how you had to pivot because you didn't have a PowerPoint ready. Um, but there's truth in when you you actually teach or uh, what you actually teach what you do every day. So I remember I was on a panel of all white men. I'm just going to say it. And, you know, I'm already five, three and I'm I'm brown. And I was not getting the respect. And someone asked a question and they all looked around. And man, by the time we were done, no one was asking them questions. Because sometimes you don't know who's in the room. And it's because I not only I, I've been doing this since 1997. I worked for a builder. I worked for McDonald's East Coast Real Estate Division as a legal assistant. So I understand commercial 
from a different perspective. I learned it because I had an inbox and I learned. So everything, this goes back to a lot of the books we've read, everything you've learned up to this point, even if you're a new real estate agent and you are just buying the journal, even if you're a seasoned agent, some of you need to go back to everything you've learned. If you work for McDonald's and it's a cashier, if you work for TJ Maxx, if you work for Nordstrom, right? Mina, Mina and I used to work in custom jewelry and we learned how to sell, right? We knew when someone was coming in on Christmas Eve and we knew that, that they needed to buy something last minute and we knew you were going out of there with at least $1,500 worth of jewelry because we paid attention. Right. So everything you've learned up to today, put into practice in real estate. You don't have to say I used to work for McDonald's, but I promise you someone threw a Big Mac at you and you are an expert at customer service. But you know what? You. Everything you just said goes to in education, even the principal's journal. And so the reason why I implore people to buy the principal's journal, I actually think parents should buy it because then they can ask the principals the right questions because in here are the same things that um, as a parent, you want to know what your leaders are doing and you can ask them the right questions. Like, so how do you know that you should relearn to unlearn to learn something new? How do you how are you being authentic with the kids? So if you're saying you're authentic, are you letting my child be authentic in the classroom? Like, are you really? And then I have a section in here. Be reflexive. Are you if you are being reflexive, are you letting kids to be reflexive? And I'll go all the way back to the word which is a word that not people use. It's called um, not reflective, reflexive, like being in the moment in the chaos and taking a moment and looking around and seeing it happen while it happens. And that word right there is called napantla. It's like, it's a Native American term that we think that we need to be reflexive, at, reflective after it happens. No, be in the moment and see it while it's happening and pivot while it's happening, which is absolutely amazing so even with the real estate um agents journal this applies outside of that industry the principal's journal applies for every industry it's not it's about the learning that's happening right now you have plenty of places to write down and reflect and revise your why but this is i wrote this with i was once told write the book you want to read this is the book that i felt like people wanted to read because they kept asking me questions. The same with the, the New Agents Journal. It, it was profound in that respect. And, and Marky, I, I'm so glad that you invited me to this because sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And this this was, this was conversation is amazing. And I'm, a, I'm glad that we're being authentic. I should well, go back to- Come back, because I need the word again. I need the native word again. Being okay. what? So, so being reflexive with an X, not reflective. I'm just going to say, I was sitting here like, does she know she's saying? I was, I was, I was, I was like, too. I'm like, me too. I was like, okay. so I was, I'm, not, I'm just saying, like, I was going to text you. I think you're saying that word wrong. So reflexive. Reflexive. Be in the moment while it's happening. And mm. the Native Americans called it napantla. So Spell that. Napantla. It's N E. P A N T L A, Nepantla. To be in the, it's like being in the eye of the storm and all this stuff is going on around you, but you don't get in the mess. You hmm. watch the mess as it's happening and you get to embrace it and learn with it as you go because we're really good at, okay, let me reflect on what I did. No, you need to reflect on what you did right now. Because I just had an agent this morning text me. And she was telling me, oh, thank God we were able to get the gas and the electric back on because they had to do an inspection. And I said, OK, now here's your next step. Go grab your journal because you're new and you need to write down what you're learning every single day. That's how you use the new real estate agents journal. We forget to go and write down what happened during the day, because if you write down what happened during the day, you can go back and you can you can be reflective. But you were reflexive in the moment because you actually are learning because then you'll know next time what to do in the process. All right. But you know what? I'm thinking about last year when the riots occurred and the looting here in the city of Chicago. So I was at home quarantined. I noticed that my fellow realtors were out volunteering. That would be Whitney Hampton and Latalo McGee. And I said, well, let me go out. And when I went out, I had to take in everything that was going on, all of the board ups, 
all of the everything. And instantly I reached out to our CEO and I'm like, Michelle, I, I think I can raise money to help in our efforts as real estate professionals with the board up and the cleanup, right? Like I could just sit there and think, okay, how do I get to leverage this in order to build, I guess, a build a sense of community. And guess what? Now that fund is giving out grants to small businesses in one of these 77 communities. I didn't come home and get on Facebook and post. Actually, I didn't post pictures of the destruction. I did post pictures of us as realtors bound together out in the community. So I will say that that was one time that I knew that happened in my life. What, because one, I was just overwhelmed, to be quite honest, right? And when you sit there, sometimes you will be overwhelmed because you're looking and you like, oh, wow. Is this okay. really happening? Is this? And I went, in that moment, I went back to the fact of my grandparents being precinct captains and me overhearing what they were doing in the community in the 70s and to realize they had destroyed the work of my grandparents. And it was in a matter of a night, right? And I'm like, well, get out of here. But then I had to separate the felons because they did not do anything to our offices. My family's been in business since 1954 here in Chicago. They didn't do anything to the businesses. So it was like you, it was, I was thankful in that moment, but I was grieving as well because I'm like, how long will it take us to rebuild this destruction? You know, so so that how do you reflexive? That was it right there. You were in the moment watching it happen and thinking about what you were gonna have to do to repair it. And that's that's what people don't necessarily do. They're so good at let's get stuff done now and they reflect at the end. But if you can be in that moment while it's happening, it's it's a it's it's life changing. It's life changing. That that right there is just understanding where you are and what you need to do with that information right then. Now, I think we some smart chicks, right? Um, we, we, we're one percenters, okay? <laughs> In all areas of everything that we do. And what I'm hearing from all of us is that we are, we, we write. We're writing something down every single day. What I will say, and Carrie and I had a debate about this a couple of years ago, I realized that I'm actually, I'm more productive when I write things down. J just using the phone doesn't do it for me. So I actually take the time to write it down because I accomplish more. I could see a change in my production. It's missing out on those small little things, the comeback, add a note here. Oh, did you do this, right? That you're going to get in your writing that you're not going to get in one of these apps. And I'm and I'm apt up, right? I think we're all apt up. But at the end of the day, we're still sitting down writing. And in the Miracle Morning, they talk about having a life saver. And in there, it is telling you that you should set 10 minutes aside every single day to write. Right now, when we look at education in our country, my son um, is graduating from eighth grade. High school is very competitive here in the city of Chicago. I need that journal to ask all the questions because not only am I networking, right, to get what I want for him, I'm also coming up with strategic alliances <laughs> to get him, but I got questions, right? And at the end of the day, I don't necessarily think it's gonna be, actually, I probably should con consult with you, Dr. Mina. Um, I got some options and I wanna do what is best for him. I don't want the Jones syndrome because a lot of times, it's not the best situation for the kid is what looks best for the parents. I don't want any of that to come into this choice. I want to do what is best for Austin. So I need that journal right now, right? Um, but as we know, in the world of real estate, pre-license does not teach you how to sell real estate. So this is what I want to know. If you could, when you do your second edition, what other question now that you've had a chance to sit with your journals right what other questions would you would you add like what's the one thing you think you should have added now that you've had a chance to reflect on it what what would that next question be that you would add in that second edition um i would add what is best for austin 
<laughs> so what is best for your child, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You uh, oh, and you because a lot of parents they forget, right? What is best? Um coming back on the principal side, Austin is not my vocal child. He talks to me, but you have to pull it out of him. Skylar was very vocal. Skylar is Skylar's advocate. He didn't like the high school I was sending him to. He came, he had his list, he was vocal, and he fought to go to Kenwood. It was the best thing for Skylar. I wanted him to go to Mizzou. He wanted to go to Howard. It cost me a lot of money. It was a sacrifice I didn't want to make, right? It was the absolute best thing for Skylar. Financially was not the best thing for me. It was the best thing for Skylar. So I'm loving that question. Carrie, what would you add to the new agent's journal? I would add, um, uh, so I have in the current one, what is your niche? But I think I would add, is it time to change your niche? Like whatever you decided to get into real estate to do, if it's not working, I think is it time to adjust because you thought you were going to get in and I'm just going to go with, let's say it was going to be luxury and you realize that your network is not luxury. It is first time home buyers, VA, FHA and military. You ha uh, that would be my next. That, I think that would be a good question. And the next one would be social media. What social media platforms are working for you? And let's go back and look at all of them so you know where to adjust. And then we got to add some other other social media platforms. Ah, so I know that we talk all the time. So we have about 10 publications living in each of us. It's just not enough time in the day because once you start with creating journals and notebooks, you start thinking about the things that your students need. You think about the things, look, Mina, that your parents need. Uh, we think about things the broker owner needs. What I want each of you to do uh, in closing is give an additional nugget. Now, Ebony Killian has stated that we have stretched her brain. I'm gonna tell you now, you, you've stretched my brain because we're consistently learning from one another, which is why we have, I call it a mutually beneficial, uh, equally yoked relationship, right? Uh, we do pick each other's brains. Uh, and that's a good thing, because now I got questions, Mina. I got a whole lot of questions for, for Austin. Um, what is one of the best, pieces of advice that you could give someone from your journal if you were going to dig deeper into one aspect today? I'll go first because Mina, I think, could talk longer. So I would say the one the one thing I would I add would be get involved right away as a real estate agent. I think that was my biggest mistake. I think, and first of all, when I started in real estate, I had a an 11 year old, a two and a half year old, and then I was pregnant, right? So right away. And the one thing I learned from the Marky Lemons Ryle was, it's my fault because I didn't ask. So my recommendation is get involved and make the ask if you're, if you wanna get involved, if you don't know what to do. Because when you, here's where my business, my life changed was in 2013 when I literally, intentionally got involved in real estate. And when I say involved, now I had been educating since 2008, but it was when I got involved, became an advocate for the real estate industry, when I got on the local real estate board, and when I became a member of Women's Council of Realtors, it's then when my eyes were open to what was available in real estate and that I actually had a voice. So I would say if I were making an update, I would say make sure you get involved right away. And and I, this is going to be hard for me to say, you do need a mentor. But don't think you can just jump into someone's DM and, and, and think they're going to be your mentor. There's some work to finding a mentor, you know, because do you need a mentor, a coach, or is it the help desk? But you do need a mentor, and, and it could be someone in your own office. It could be the friend that was also a real estate agent in another state. And I say this because, and you need to listen, because there are real estate agents that I work with. I will bring you along for the ride, and I will help you get to where I am faster than I got there because I didn't know. So even because of Marky Lemons, because of Regina, I was able to now get into the real estate instructing arena. 
but it was because they opened the door to be that that mentor or to guide me to the places where I needed to go. So highly recommend mentor can't just be anyone. You might have to build a relationship first. So I will tell you, because even Ebony has figured it out. She doesn't just show up. She engages on social media. She comments, she reposts, she shows up to a uh, class for six and 12 and she engages and she's intentional. That's how you actually get a mentor. So get involved, figure out that you can be an advocate and you do need a mentor. Wow. What about you? Okay. So um, I'm going to, continue on the route of the mentor a mentor chooses you you don't choose a mentor and i fully agree if if i choose the person that becomes my mentee because i see the hustle that they want as a principal as a leader i even as a parent community member i please don't go up to somebody and say can you be my mentor i don't know you i i need you to go out and show people who you are if you want to be, um, um, if you want someone to mentor you. My mentor is Dr. Gaskins. She was a, my principal boss at one point, and I still talk to her. I seek that out. And with that, I'm going to say that because you, you possibly need a mentor or a coach, that you go out and you collaborate with people outside of your industry. Because if you don't, like this is a collaborative effort, and I'm not in real estate, but I am in the business of trying to uh, have students and their families go into the community where I work. And we need to collaborate as real estate agents and as leaders in a school district. Because if we don't have students coming to our school district and moving in, we don't get paid. So we, we have to have that collaborative effort. And I literally, there is a chap, there is a place in the book that talks about how to be collaborative outside of your network. Because as a principal, I didn't just look at the principals in my school district that when I was a principal. I went outside. I asked parents questions. What do you need? We need to have those conversations. And there is a quote that I, I really kind of wanted to say, because what has happened with um, the world has shifted us so much that it shook us up, threw us in the air and just said, good luck, start over, figure it out. And as a leader in the world we literally need to uh, and i'm going to read this quote verbatim it's the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn and that right there is what happened to education we and that was alvin talver yes and and the reason why i say that quote and and is because we need to change who we are stop blaming your mom and dad because you didn't get what you wanted everything you do is a choice when you hit say it again in the morning that's a choice 15 times you can either just get up the first time or you can make 15 choices what what's easier so i i make a choice grab the journal, grab both journals, because this goes outside of industries that allow you to ask questions for your, your, your children. It will allow you to have conversations on what you need to do in your industry. So I'm excited about this conversation. And yes, Marky and Carrie, we need to have a conversation offline too. Yes, we do. Carrie just sent me a text. So this is what Carrie noticed about me. These kids are getting on my nerves. Today is photo day for Austin. I told him we will leave out of the house at 10 o'clock. He has been in here five times every 10 minutes, cap and gown on. Like, he don't care nothing about the fact of the note on the door, the fact he's not supposed to talk to me. All of that went out the way for eighth grade graduation photos. And yes, Carrie, I have dressed wet down to the ankle because carrie asking me do i have on underwear <laughs> because we know we supposed to come <laughs> dressed down to the ankles just in case me and Aunt carrie i want to thank you because i don't want to kill my child today i want to definitely come back and dive in even deeper um yes you got on your pants and they cute too uh in deeper we want to we appreciate everyone who hopped in with your comments i want you to go today I want you to look up Dr. Mina Blazy, Carrie Joe Little, purchase their books, understand their journals that will help guide you. Uh, and now I'm thinking we need some more publications this year. So we, we, we will definitely talk about that because Carrie will say I'm going to hijack their time today. I'm not going to hijack their time today. Uh, so guys, 
Thank you.